Flour contains starch, and starch is a type of carbohydrate made from long chains of simple sugars joined together. Like sugars, starch absorbs liquid. When starches are heated with liquid, they swell and will thicken. This is a key process in sauce making. It is known as gelatinization. As a white sauce is heated, the starch grains soften. They absorb liquid and swell. The starch grains break open and thicken the liquid by releasing amylose. So the process of gelatinization starts at 60 degrees. The sauce begins to thicken at 85 degrees, but it's not fully completed until it reaches 100 degrees. During heating, the starch grains swell to more than five times their normal size. At this point, the starch will break open and the amylase will be released into the sauce, which will thicken the sauce. A gelatinized sauce making method making use of these processes is the roux sauce. Roux is a thickening agent for liquids and it's a fancy name for flour mixed with fat. Equal parts of butter and flour get cooked over a medium heat before the liquid gets added gradually, stirring after each addition. The mixture then boils, thickens, reduces and becomes the base of your sauce. And here we have it. So we now have our thickened, gelatinized roux sauce. So we're now going to do a velouté sauce, which is going to start in the same way as you would do with a roux. We're going to melt off the butter. And once that's melted, we're going to add the flour. And to that, I'm going to add a stock. As it heats up, the starch begin to swell and then we'll have gelatinization and a thickened velouté sauce. So now the sauce is just beginning to bubble and as it bubbles up you can see that the sauce has now gelatinized and formed a lovely creamy velouté sauce. How heat is applied to the sauce is known as heat transfer and there are three methods of heat transfer. So the method of heat transfer used in cooking the roux is primarily through conduction. The heat from the hob passes through the metal pan and heats up the sauce. In natural or mechanical convection, heat is transferred through the gases or liquids. Natural convection occurs when gas or liquid closest to the heat becomes less dense, rises and is replaced by a cooler, denser gas or liquid. The convection cycle is very similar to what happens inside a lava lamp. So liquid or gas closer to the heat source becomes less dense, rises, cools down, becomes denser and then falls. And this is the convection method going on within the source. So in this roux sauce, there's not as much liquid and it's a fairly dense consistency. So we have to do something called mechanical convection, where we aid the convection ourselves by stirring it and it also prevents the lumps from coming together as well. To show how radiation works, we are going to add some cheese to our roux sauce and make a cauliflower cheese. I'm going to pour that over the top of our cauliflower and then add some more grated cheese over the top. This method of heat transfer is called radiation. Heating by radiation takes place when heat is transferred directly onto food by infrared rays from the heat source. And now the finished product. The cauliflower cheese has been browned and crisped by radiation. We're now going to look at the different heat transfers for different types of oven and how that affects the end product. So we've got two identical batches of scones and we're going to see how quickly and how evenly they cook in each of the different types of oven. In gas ovens, the heat is transferred from the gas flames around the oven by convection. 
the heat is also transferred from the metal baking tray to the food by conduction. So here are the results from the gas oven. So this is the top level of the oven and the hottest part of the oven, which has resulted in our scones with a slightly darker colour to them. This is the middle of the oven, medium temperature of the oven, and this is where we've got nicely cooked and finished off scones. And then we have the bottom layer of the oven where the scones are a little undercooked. Now we have three different results for the three different heights within the oven. It shows the inefficiency of a gas oven. But there are advantages to having three different temperatures in the one oven. You could have two or three things cooking at the same time for different lengths of time. So you might think this strange that the bottom of the oven should have the coolest point when the flames are at the bottom. But hot air rises and as it rises to the top, the hottest part of the oven is the top. The air cools and then goes down to the bottom. And this is the convection currents going round the oven, cooking the food. Here are the results in from the electric oven. You can see that they're far more even and consistent than the gas oven. In electric fan ovens, there is convection heat, but it is far more efficient using built-in fans to quickly move the hot air around. There is also still heat transferred from the metal baking tray to the food by conduction, plus there is radiation from the walls of the oven. And this all means food cooks far more quickly and evenly. As I said in the introduction to sauce making, starch gelatinization is when the starch granules break open to release amylose into the liquid. It begins at 60 degrees Celsius and the liquid will thicken at about 85 degrees Celsius, but it is not fully complete until the sauce has boiled. Now in a microwave, there's a variety of temperatures going on. So to do a sauce in a microwave, we're looking at a different method. We're gonna use an all-in-one method all of the ingredients are in the one bowl. Microwave ovens use electromagnetic waves to cook food. Microwaves are a form of radiation. I'm going to remove the bowl and stir away. Not only are we aiding it through mechanical convection, but we're also stopping any lumps forming within the sauce. Repeat the process of cooking for two minutes and then whisking until you have a smooth sauce. So this is an all-in-one white sauce made with flour, butter and milk in the microwave. And the method of heat transfer is radiation. It is the flour in a sauce that causes it to thicken by gelatinization. For gelatinization to take place, the sauce needs to be heated. During this process, the starch grains swell and grow up to five times their normal size. Starch gelatinization is when the starch granules break open to release the amylose into the liquid. Gelatinization begins at 60 degrees Celsius and the liquid will thicken at about 85 degrees Celsius, but it is not fully complete until the sauce has boiled. You have seen sauces made by the roux method and the all-in-one method on the hob and in the microwave. Conduction, convection and radiation are all methods of heat transfer from the cooker to the food.